From the proud but simple cups of competition to the exquisite treasures of the Mansion House, that great monument to London's history and pageantry, a collection of gold and silver plate, cups and ceremonial swords that are today priceless, not only as masterpieces of craftsmanship and design, but for their great historical significance. A spectacle that is matched only by the dignity and splendor of ceremonial occasions graced by the most distinguished gatherings, and headed as here by the Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress of London. This is a special occasion with a difference, for the Lord Mayor, Sir Cuthbert Ackroyd, has established a precedent by acting as host to, and here's the behind the scenes clue, yes, a fashion show, a display of day and evening clothes in wool designed by members of the Incorporated Society of London Fashion Designers. Not to be outdone by this blaze of colour, the attendants wear their historic state ceremonial dress, which many years ago was replaced every year at a cost of £500 per uniform. In this more sober age of economy, they have to last much longer, of course. And it's the women's clothes that have to be continually replaced at great expense to their husbands. For the first time in the history of the famous Egyptian hall, mannequins parade along a specially constructed platform wearing the latest creations, like this design by John Kavanagh, a fine wool tweed coat with velour finish. Counterpart is the name given to this box jacket in fine grey and blue check suiting, worn here over a matching slim dress with relaxed empire line. The large hat and muff of beaver complete a distinguished picture. Something really new for the audience, which includes ambassadors and their wives and high-ranking Commonwealth officials. Introducing the Scarab line by Owen of La Chasse, and called in fact Scarab One, a tailored suit in fine grey face cloth with high neckline. The jacket is draped at the back to give the Scarab line. The effect lies in the design, so don't start tearing your own jackets down the back. The display puts a double strain on the fashion houses, for in addition to this rare atmosphere, many members of the distinguished audience are fashion experts of considerable authority. The Lord Mayor himself is a wool merchant and well able to appreciate the finer points in design. This is the sort of glamorous model the average housewife dreams about. A mushroom afternoon dress in gossamer featherweight wool chiffon. Designed by Hartnell, the dress is worn with a Cossack hat and stole of natural blue fox. Despite the occasion, the mannequins wait their turn in an atmosphere of tranquility, in keeping with the dignity of the setting, aided no doubt by the inspiring presence of the Lord Mayor's own personal attendants. An outfit by Matley, a slightly bell-shaped coat lined with musquash. Special features include a winged collar and the front panel detail which form pockets. Underneath is a loosely woven green tweed dress which has square detail to form two flat panels travelling to the hemline. No marks for guessing why Charles Creed calls this ensemble Dear Watson. Yes, the full length cape over the coat. Elementary, my dear Watson. Great ladies dressed in silks and satins used to be the order of the day. But on this occasion, wool captures the limelight with these spectacular evening creations. And spectacular they really are. Like this ball gown by Digby Morton in the ancient colours of the hunting Stuart.
designed by Hardy Ames, this full-length hostess gown would look beautiful in any fashion age. The front is fitted into the princess line, while the back falls into a wide drape from the yoke over a very full skirt. The sleeves, by the way, are tipped with sable. Another fascinating creation, this time by Michael Sherrard, is this wool-lace ball gown with shadowed pink underskirt. The dress has a high neckline embroidered with crystals and dips into a V at the back, from which falls a full skirt, giving a bustle effect. A vision of loveliness and a fitting climax to an historic occasion.